all right so welcome back everyone this is the 90 days security challenge for comtia security plus exam preparation i'm so happy for you all right so before we go ahead make sure you subscribe to the channel because we are going to learn a lot about risk assessment all right so let's begin um well let me use something okay perfect yeah so the first thing is uh, this is the core element. This is the entirely the core element of the risk assessment. Okay, so whatever we are learning now, this is all about what is the core aspects needed in order to calculate the risk. Okay, you see the risk assessment is all about the risk calculation. And if you remember our very first lecture about what is risk, this is what we have already learned. Okay, and why I'm teaching you again? It is because this is this is the way you get the question in the exam as well, specifically about risk assessment. So we are following the content as per the exam preparation. Okay, although I have uh, you know gave you the idea in the advance, but remember this is something which is really needed. So the first very core important point is the pri prioritizing threat. You should remember this always. Okay, this is not a process. We'll be having a process just in the next slide. But remember that this is the very important thing. So once you get the threat, uh, you need to make sure is it really worth solving. Uh, so that's how we prioritize the threats. Okay, so the one which has the more uh, risk based on the calculation that we have done, uh, we act accordingly. Next is scope of the risk we perform these we, we usually this is very similar to what we do in the in the case of other compliances as well like pci dss compliance iso 27001 compliance these are not really compliance but framework as well the, in the, those cases as well before we start our uh, audit program or a, you know compliance activity we need to make sure what is the scope of our assessment or maybe our audit so that way uh, we decide whether the entire organization has to be audited or we have to perform the risk assessment or a specific headquarter or some of the limited branch offices. Maybe we have a specific project for uh, you know a, uh, maybe any offshore offshore area or maybe it's for the entire department right so that way we decide what are the our entire risk uh, you know scope of the risk assessment why it is needed because based on the scope itself we decide how many devices or how many assets we have to include in that uh, assessment or the audit so we can include if we select let's say our all of our headquarters and all of our branch offices we have to include all the servers database I devices on all our branch offices, any legacy system if we have, and if we also included the cloud resources as well, let's say we, we might be hosting our data in our AWS cloud or maybe on Azure cloud or maybe on GCP as well. In those situations, we have to be very explicit in saying, okay, in our scope of risk assessment, we also include, we also want to include the data hosted in the cloud as well. Right? So this is what we have to specify in the very, very beginning. Okay. Now let's move on to the next one. Uh, now let's talk about the risk assessment process. Perfect. Now this is what we have already discussed, but this is very, very important to uh, you know understand as well. So, so you see, this is the, first of all, we have to decide this scope as we have just understood. We have to decide what, uh, if we need to include the entire organization, just the headquarters, single project, entire department, anything, okay? then we identify the risk now this is where we decide if you remember the very first lecture we have to understand about our threat sorry we have to understand about our threat then we understand what are the assets we have and then we find what are the vulnerabilities i'm sorry <laughs> about my writing okay but we have to understand about what are the uh, vulnerabilities we have on all of our assets. Maybe you'd see our, our software, maybe on our operating system, maybe on our hardware as well, maybe humans as well, okay? So we need to calculate these parameters. Next, we calculate two important points. 
if you even recall, we calculate the likelihood. Uh, likelihood is basically, uh, you know, understanding what are the chances that this vulnerability will reoccur or the chances of getting compromised. Okay. So maybe we, we got DDoS attack, uh, last month or maybe continuously in past, uh, past four months. So chances are we might get a DDoS attack in this month as well. So that's the likelihood. This could be likely or it could be highly likely. So depends on that. You decide, you know, uh, what's the likelihood really looks like. Then you calculate the business impact. Okay. Now the business impact is very, very important because based on this itself, you decide if the, you need to, what action you need to take on a risk. Okay. So if let's say if DDoS attack happen, you might lose, uh, $40,000 maybe the company might lose $40,000 in an hour. In that case, if the organization thinks, okay, 40,000 per hour could be a huge loss. And even the customers as well, customers and in fact, their trust too, it could be a problem, right? So that way organization decide if they need to take any action on it or not. Right. Right. So, Perfect. So let's go ahead. And the next fourth step is basically to work on determining and prioritizing the risk. This is where this is this is the point where we try to understand about our risk. We calculate okay based on the amounts that might we might lose. What is the priority? And then we start acting on it accordingly, based on the business and operational factor. That's what I meant to say. Now, if we talk about the, if we, if we talk about the, you know, documenting the risk, this is very, very important because in this case, we have to take care of a lot of stuff because in this case, you need to maintain the documents about the risk scenarios that you have created that I mentioned over here as well. Also, you need to specify about the identification date. You also need to specify in the document about the existing, what are the different existing security controls. Okay. And you also need to specify about the current risk level. Okay. So for, we might be having our existing risk level, maybe on the high, maybe on the low. So do we have any existing risk assessment? If we have, then there would be for every asset will be having a specific risk level. So we need to calculate that as well. If our existing risk level, maybe any of our, um, uh, any of our team member have calculated the risk level in the past and maybe in the last year or maybe in the last quarter as high. So this situation and the, in the, in the, in this quarter, the things might have changed because of many business category, maybe the organization moved a lot into digital transformation. Maybe the organization open a lot of mobility, artificial intelligence solution on Mac, they might have opened different branch offices in several other organization. This changes the entire business structure. So the risk level also changes, right? And finally, you need to specify about the progress status. Okay. So this is the way you calc you, you actually prepare your document. So the purpose of it is to basically prepare a document. Okay. This is where you'd specify the scope. You specify the risk, you identify the risk and specify all of them, including the asset threat vulnerability. And then you analyze the risk. You analyze the risk based on likelihood and the business impact. And then you decide, determine and prioritize, prioritize the risk. And finally, you need to document all of them, right? So this would be a part of any annexures, right? So this is the document that you have to complete and then share across with the different stakeholders. Okay. So this would be shared with different parties who can review it and then they can share their view. All right. I hope this was clear for you. If you have any question, you can ask me in the comment. Thank you so much. Thank you.